Now let's do another example with dynamics. This one's going to be a special one where we are given some data uh, that we have to use to make a graph and then use that graph to find the coefficient of friction or mu. And then there's going to be a third part to this question that I'm going to do in a separate video that asks us if the block were on an incline, what is the smallest angle that would cause it to move? And I'm doing this in a separate video because it's kind of a different problem to itself. Um, but that being said, let's get started with, uh, with this question. So first, taking a look at our data, we're missing the data for the normal force. So it's asking us to, to uh, calculate that ourselves. And what is the normal force? Well, F normal. What, what, is, what is the normal force? Well, let's take a look at some generic object. And it's just sitting on the ground. And we're, we're, not, we're not pushing it in either direction, so it doesn't have any forces in the x-axis. But it will always have a force of gravity acting on it. And let's just say, let's just say this has a mass of two kilograms. What would be the force of gravity? Well, the force of gravity is equal to mg. So it's the mass times the gravitational constant. Well, two kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, which is equal to 19.62 newtons. So that's the force of gravity. But there is another force that stops this from getting, um, from getting pulled right through the ground. So there's a force that the ground has to act on this object to stop it from moving. And it's going to look like this. In the opposite direction but equal in magnitude is the force normal, the normal force. And it is equal to... It is equal to Fg, equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. And because they're equal, our box is sitting still. It's not moving up, it's not moving down. So our F normal in this case is equal to Fg, which is equal to Mg, which, well, it's going to be the same. 19.62 newtons. So that being said... The normal force is equal to the mass times the gravitational constant. And let's, let's apply that up here. So normal force, Fm, is equal to mg. And we're given a mass, and we know that g is 9.81 meters per second squared. So 0 0.245 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared is equal to, we just have to type this into the calculator, 2.403 newtons. And we're gonna, we're gonna apply that same formula all the way down this column. I'm not gonna rewrite this formula because it's just gonna be the exact same. It's gonna be 0 0.745 times 9.81. Uh, and I want to change the color of these to blue so you can see what what I'm writing. So that being said, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be rewriting this formula. I'm just gonna write the the values we get when we plug it into our calculator. So seven point three zero eight. I encourage you to try these along with me. Type them into your calculator. Get the practice. See if you can get the same answers. So 22.02 and 31.83. And these are all in Newtons. The units are given to us in the table. Okay, so we have we have this table filled out. And we want to graph in part A. Use the data table to graph force of friction versus the normal force. So which one we, we want our we want our independent variable on the x-axis and we want our dependent variable on the y-axis. So which one which one's which here? Well the one the the uh, the variable that we have control over 
in this case is the mass of our object. And the one that's related to the mass of the object is the normal force. So we, when we're doing this experiment, the normal force is what we control. And the force of friction is just a result of that. So the force of friction depends on the normal force. So I'm gonna I'm gonna label these axes. Here we have the normal force. Now this one I'm gonna write it sideways. Force of friction. Also in newtons. So all we have to do now is assign a scale. So let's look at the normal force. Let's look at the normal force here. In our graph, it goes from 0 0.4 to 10.2. Uh, sorry, the normal force goes from 2.4 up to 31.8. So when we are doing, uh, when we're doing the step here where we have to assign a scale to our graph, we want it to end up at 30. Because we need our highest value to fit on our graph. So we're going to put 30 at the top, so then our 31 will be somewhere around there, so it'll fit. And then the rest, we just want to make sure that we're spacing these out evenly. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and then for the y-axis, looking at the force of friction, our highest value is 10.2. So we can call we can call the top of this 10, and our 10.2 is just going to be a little bit above that, but that's okay. We want it to work in nice, easy to work with round numbers. So 10, and then we're gonna we're gonna start filling these in. So two four, six, eight. So it's always a little bit of a trick working out these scales, but you always look at what's your highest value and putting that around the end. So putting that around your end and then working out these nice, uh, these nice round numbers in between. So now that we've got our scale established, let's start graphing these points. So the first one, uh, looking at the normal force, 2.4, force of friction, 0.4. Let's go 2.4 is going to be somewhere around here. 0.4. So there will be our first point. Next point, uh, normal force, 7.3, and force of friction, uh, 2. So let's graph that over here. So force of friction 2, 7.3 is going to be somewhere around there. So there's our second point. And our third point, 12.2 and 3.1. So 12.2, 3.1 is going to be somewhere around there. Uh, so here's our third point. And then our fourth point, 14.2 and 4.4. 4.2 .4. is going to be about, uh, about there. And then our 4.4 is going to be somewhere around there. And our fifth point, 22.2. .2, or 22.0, I mean, and 6.4. Somewhere around, somewhere around there, 22. And then for 6.4, it's going to be somewhere up, put about this level. So these don't have to be exactly perfect, but you want to be within, within the range accurate enough so that your um, so that your graph can be a true reflection of your data like you don't have to be pulling out a ruler 
like putting these spot, these points in precisely the correct position, but do as best as you can to put them where they belong. So 31.8, again, looking at 30 and going just beyond, just beyond 30. And then for 10.2, just a little bit above the 10. So when we graph that, it's going to be right around there. All right, so now we finish part A to, uh, to graph the force of friction versus the normal force. We've got all six of our data points put on this graph. And what you notice, we can draw a trend line that kind of goes through our points. Yeah, obviously, you can't touch all your points, but you want to kind of average them out so that you're as close as you possibly can be to all of your all of your points. So I want to put the line somewhere around somewhere around here. So we have kind of the we we've, we've kind of averaged through averaged through these points and we got this one up here that's just a little bit higher than the rest but it's we did our best to draw a line that approximates all of our data, all of our data points. So, part B is going to ask us to use the graph to find the coefficient of friction, or mu. And what do we know about mu? Well, we know that there's a relationship between the force of friction because it equals to mu times F n. That is. That is our formula to find the force of friction. So we can rearrange this equation to isolate from mu by bringing the normal force back to the other side of the equation. And instead of being a multiplication, on this side it will be a division. So let's write that out, that mu. And I'm going to write the force of friction and bring this Fn to the other side as a division. So now we have this formula for mu being equal to the force of friction over Fn. So I'm going to write mu is equal to force of friction over, over Fn. And I'm going to, I want to do a little bit of color coding now. I'm going to make this, uh, this text can stay black. Sorry about that. So, so we've got this different blue here, the force of friction time uh, over the normal force. And I want to show you on this graph how we're going to calculate this. So what we need, we need a value for the force of friction and we need a value for the normal force. And what's, what's neat about this is we can pick whatever point we want on this black line. So whether we want to use this point here, uh, this point here, this point here. Notice these are three spots I've chosen because they are nice, clean. They intersect. They intersect at these uh, at these nice round numbers. But theoretically, if you wanted to go kind of halfway, you could you could pick this as your point. You could pick this as your point. You could pick. You could pick this as your point. There's no there's no right or wrong. It's just a matter of picking the point that's easiest to work with. And the general rule for this is go go far out and pick pick a point like this. That's a nice intersection of of uh, of uh, of clean numbers. So here I'm gonna do this in purple to show you that when we pick when we pick this point here. And we follow it down. The normal force is 30 newtons. And when we follow it across, when we follow it across here, the force of friction is 9 newtons. So here we have two numbers that we're going to be able to use to calculate mu. So mu is equal to, remember force of friction? Well, what's our force of friction? It says nine newtons. It says nine newtons. So nine newtons. 
and it's divided by the normal force. A normal force, our value is 30 newtons. So 9 newtons over 30 newtons. And when we put this into our calculator, that tells us that mu is equal to 0 0.3. And that's, that's going to conclude this video. Uh, if you want to see uh, the next part, you'll find it in my next video. Uh, but anyways, I hope you were able to follow along and learn. I hope I was able to make this clear and uh, easy for you all to understand. But that concludes this video.